So life is slowly returning to normal in Malaysia, or at least the new normal. And the same thing is happening here in the US, but it's happening a lot more slowly and not going as smoothly as it is in Malaysia. So stick around and find out why. Welcome to another video and good afternoon from Washington. If you're new to my channel or you haven't seen my recent videos, you should know that I was in Malaysia for a while, in Kuala Lumpur, uh, before the MCO, during the MCO, and then I came back to the US where they're doing things a lot differently as far as COVID goes, which I found interesting. Uh, a lot of my Malaysian viewers and subscribers have been curious about how things are going here in the US. Uh, so for the past two months, I've been making videos comparing the two. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so by clicking the link below. It only takes a second and it helps me out a lot. Go ahead and click it. I'll wait for you. So if you've seen my other question and answer videos and my Ramadan videos, you know that I'm in my little hut that I built in the forest right next to the creek here. Uh, very close to here is the tree house that I built in a fallen tree that goes across the creek. Um, and I've been working on an even bigger project here in the forest. Uh, it's taken me about a month so far. Um, I've been building a walking trail through the forest. It's been a lot of work. Uh, but today I was going to show you guys that project that I've been working on while I'm answering these questions. So let's get started. So first question. Is there still lockdown or MCO in U.S. where you live and rest of U.S.? Not exactly. They're actually moving out of the MCO right now. It's like the recovery phase, uh, similar to Malaysia. Malaysia, of course, you had the MCO for a couple months, and then there was like the CMCO, the Conditional Movement Control Order, where they were trying to get the economy going again. Um, and I know in Malaysia, at least, uh, everybody was, or a lot of people were protesting against the CMCO. A lot of people uh, were petitioning to keep everything closed, and I know that not every area in Malaysia opened back up again. And the opposite was happening here in the U.S. People were protesting to get the economy going back again. And as you saw in my video that I filmed in Portland, Oregon, even when we had the MCO, a lot of people were not following the rules. A lot of businesses were closed during the MCO here in the U.S., um, but people, they were still going out, they were still hanging out with friends, um, they weren't really socially distancing. Um, so we had the MCO, people weren't really following it, and now everything's opening back up again. It's in recovery mode, just like the uh, RMCO, the Recovery Movement Control Order, which is happening now in Malaysia. But here in the U.S., pretty much everything is opening. Every state in the U.S. is moving out of the MCO and moving towards a new normal. Um, but every state is doing it at a different pace. It is up to the states after all. Some states are opening slowly, some are opening uh, a lot more quickly, and the cases in the U.S. are skyrocketing because of that. Pretty much every state in the U.S. the cases are increasing. Although it's interesting, New York City, which at the beginning of this crisis was the most hardly hit, uh, most of the cases were in New York City. When I first came back to the U.S., I landed in New York City, and it was increasing like crazy there. Um, but now New York City it's leveled off and uh, they're actually doing better than the rest of the country because they were shut down so early uh, everybody's used to it by now and everybody's following the rules in New York actually today when I'm filming this it's officially the first day of summer in the US so people are going out swimming in the rivers and the beaches and they're socializing and they're drinking and they're going to bars and partying we had some major holidays recently which are popular kind of party holidays so during the MCO, people weren't really following the rules, the virus was still increasing, and now the MCO has officially ended. And a lot of people were actually staying home and doing it properly. They weren't going to work, they weren't going shopping. Uh, they were limiting their exposure to people and socially distancing. Um, but now the rules are ending, the MCO is ending, they can actually go out. Uh, the weather's warmer, uh, they want to get out and socialize because they have been stuck at home. So there is a new normal here in the U.S. A lot of people are adjusting to the times, uh, adjusting to the new lifestyle here. However, I don't see the virus going away anytime soon here in the U.S. This is poor tea, which I got in Yunnan, China. I lived in Yunnan for a year. It just comes in this giant frisbee looking thing. Also, I have one of my very last snacks from Malaysia. Nestle Nestum Aeromalicious Multi-Bigerin Berkassiet. 
Are Americans wearing masks now, or are they still avoiding it? So that totally depends on where you're at in the U.S. Uh, some places it's required, some places it's not. Um, at the moment, there's about 15 states in the U.S. that require you, you to wear a mask when you're outside or in public spaces. Uh, most of those are uh, centered around New York, uh, a lot of the hot spots in the U.S. But in Oregon, where I'm from, in Washington, where I live, uh, there's no requirement. You're not required to wear a mask when you're out in public. And there's certain places, like uh, certain stores, like Costco, which is a really popular grocery store in the U.S. Costco requires masks, and they give you masks for free. But for the most part, nobody's required to. Recently, I traveled to my hometown, which is in the desert in Oregon. And it's a really rural area. There's not a lot of cases there. Uh, we went into a grocery store and I saw maybe two people with masks on in the entire grocery store. And people are kind of looking at you funny if you have a mask on because it's just not that common there. But um, in the more populated areas like Portland, Oregon, for instance, which is where I've been working recently, if you go into a store, pretty much everybody wears a mask. Um, and if you're not wearing a mask there, then people are giving you dirty looks. So it just really depends on where you're at, if it's a populated area or a rural area, or if you're in a state that requires the mask or not. So this is actually an apple tree back here, but we've never been able to get to the apples because there's all these thorn bushes surrounding it. So I'm going to cut those out so we can actually get to them. I want to ask a little about the U.S. Is there any frontline riders such as Food Panda or Grab Food over there? Um, we do have similar services. We don't have Food Panda here as far as I know or Grab Foods. We have one called Uber Eats as well as Grubhub. Uh, those are the two main ones that I'm aware of. It's not available where I live because it's just such a rural area. It's a small town. There's only a couple restaurants in town anyway. Um, so it's not available where I'm at, but in the bigger cities like Portland, Oregon, for instance, it is available, um, although it's not as cheap as it is in Malaysia or Asian countries. I remember using Food Panda in Taiwan and China, as well as Swiggy in India, and the delivery prices were next to nothing, so it was really convenient and really cheap to get food delivered. Um, but here in the U.S., it's a lot more expensive. Labor in the U.S. is expensive, so people have to drive it to your house. So it's almost not worth it to have them deliver. You might as well just go pick it up at the restaurant. Most of the restaurants are doing curbside pickup, uh, which is normal here because everybody in the U.S. has a car. Everybody's used to fast food and drive through windows. So yes, we do have similar services here in the U.S., although it's a little bit more expensive than it would be in Asia. Congratulations, Cody, on celebrating Ramadan. Did you celebrate Hari Raya? Uh, I did, in fact, although I was by myself. If you didn't see my Ramadan videos, I made two of them. I actually fasted for 30 days during Ramadan, although I did cheat a couple days, but for the most part I did pretty well. Um, and at the end of Ramadan I did celebrate Hari Raya, but I did do it on my own since none of my friends or family uh, were celebrating Ramadan. Um, none of my friends here in the U.S. are Muslim, so I pretty much just had a big feast all to myself. So I did celebrate, I don't know if I celebrated it properly, but I celebrated it in my own way. Um, and it was a nice reward for myself after uh, putting in all that hard work during Ramadan. So there's actually two places to enter the trail. One from over by my hut and the tree fort, and the other right here, which is actually hidden. You can't actually see it. Are many of the shops and malls where you live open? Um, I've been talking to a lot of my friends in Malaysia, and it seems like uh, pretty much everything's opening back up there, although slowly. Some of my friends have been going to the gym there in Malaysia, and it seems you have to schedule it ahead of time, and there's only a couple people allowed in the gym at a time. I see a lot of my friends in Malaysia have been going to the malls recently, which is nice. Um, I remember when I was there, the malls were open, like Times Square and KLCC and Pavilion, um, but pretty much everything was closed. The only thing that was open was like 7-Eleven and pharmacies and some food stores. You can still go to big stores like Walmart here in the U.S. and you can get anything you want. You can still get furniture and clothes and things like that. So it's not all that bad. Also recently we've been going out to restaurants once a week, which has been nice. It's been months since I've been to a restaurant. We went to a, a Mexican food restaurant and a French cuisine restaurant. The restaurants have been socially distancing and closing off every other table or moving the tables further apart and only allowing a certain amount of customers in. The servers are usually wearing masks um, and gloves sometimes. So they are taking some steps in the restaurants, which is nice. So I do feel safe going to the restaurants, um, although I don't want Want to do it all the time. In the interior I have this trail which makes a big loop and comes back around 
And on the inside here, I pruned all this out. I took all the branches off the trees, all the lower branches. Um, I trimmed all these bushes up. I took all the blackberry bushes out. This was all thorn bushes, uh, which you couldn't even walk through before. And now it's just this nice ground cover, uh, the trees, and then these uh, fern bushes sticking up. So there's walls on the outside. The inside is kind of nice and open, so it's like a little park. There's birds chirping. There's deer that come through here occasionally. So it's like my own little secret garden here in the forest that nobody knows about. So that's it everybody for my new project here in the forest, as well as part three of my question and answer video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.